All right, here's the chair that we're gonna start working on next. There's four of these, two over there, one over here. They're in really good condition, except for some of the wood, but I'm not worried about that right now. Right now we're dealing with the upholstery. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the Dixie Bell Bonding Boss on this upholstery. I'm gonna go and just really prime it and cover it well to make sure that it is, you know, once you put the bonding boss on there, um, it becomes literally, you know, waterproof and resistant to soils and smells. So I just think because of some of the stains that are on here and because of the, the dirty marks, I've, you know, I think it's best to put obviously the bonding boss on. And because I plan on doing the upholstery in a light, uh, the uh, cream color that we used on top of the table. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do the bonding boss first and then I'll work on the fabric and get the fabric completely done with striping and everything. Um, and then the wood comes last. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this. Just a couple of side notes about this chair when you're doing upholstery, you know, you've gotta be able to pull back like this and get down in there. Now I have vacuumed down in there as best as I can get everything, but it's gonna be a little difficult. Okay, I'm gonna show you. This is my <clears throat> one chair with two coats of bonding boss on there. And it's it looks great. I sanded it, it still feels good. Um, I had to go back in here and you can see there's a little bit of blue showing through there. It's because the uh, fabric stuck to the other fabric when I was painting it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this back and when I'm painting my buttercream on, I'm just gonna lightly, uh, you know, thin down my buttercream and get it in there and just stain that part of the fabric. Because it's not covered with a, a coat of bonding boss yet, it's gonna absorb the brown or the buttercream that I put on there. Um, that's the best thing I can tell you. Boy, th that's a difficult spot right there on the chair. And then here's the back, and that too will be all buttercream. And then what I'm gonna do on the back is put some of these inlays on the back. Because I had eight sheets with the purchase, and I only used one and a half sheets on this particular piece right here, I have plenty left that I can do all four chairs with so that the back of the chairs match the top of the table. And then this green is what the wood on the chairs is gonna be. So they will also match with the table. Even what I need to do now is I'm gonna make a template. After I get the other two chairs done, I'm gonna make a two inch template and I'm gonna put that and draw my stripes on the cushions and I will show you when I get to that point. Well, here they are. All four of them have two coats of primer and two coats of my cream chalk paint that I made. Um, I think they're looking great. A little bit wet still. I'm really not thrilled with where the cushion goes down right here on this edge. You know, I've done everything I can to get in there and get that blue, and it's really quite hard. It's kind of discouraging. I'll see what I can do once it's all dry. Um, I just would hate for this to ever have someone sit on it and see the blue. So, um, maybe with some dark wax, because I choose to do wa dark wax on this, I can get in there and use the dark wax um, and shadow it. So that's an idea. That's, that's definitely um, a possible solution. So anyway, here we go. Here's the other two. Again, I wasn't too careful about getting paint on the wood because that's going to be all undercoated with the chocolate color. So there they are, and I will move on from here tomorrow. Here's the chair that's been coffee stained. Here's the chair that has it. So if you look at them side by side in this screenshot, let's see, you can see one's just slightly darker than the other. So, and that's with me daubing it on and then daubing it off with a wet towel. And then what I did do was put some coffee down in there and it did make a difference and that's where I plan on shadowing anyway, right through there. And so it'll stain that blue down in there darker. On the chairs now, I've put the uh, brown stripes on it. Also, I put the chocolate on 
And then you'll see after the chocolate, I went ahead and did the green. And we're gonna get ready to coffee dye these chairs. Okay, I'm gonna show you quickly what I'm doing. I am coffee dyeing the chairs and I've got some coffee here mixed up in a cup, got a pot of water, got myself a wet washcloth, and I'm just pounding on the coffee stain with a sea sponge. And I'm getting it up on my green because I want my green um, coffee stained. And then I'm getting it all over on my cream, the back of my chair, basically it's a blank canvas. And I'm just pounding it on. I'm gonna stop there because I've got a little more to go. But I'm gonna go back with a washcloth and get some of that off. Let me rinse my cloth one more time. And that way, it gives it a nice antique look, but it's not too stained and the coffee comes right off the fabric right now. Because the uh, chalk paint is very porous, it does absorb it. And if it gets too dark, like this corner, Just some padding. Just keep on padding away. Get down here, it looks like there's a light spot. I'm just gonna blend that in. I don't want any definite lines. And I don't pat off of the paint. The paint, I want antiqued. And it's kind of hard to see the antique. Let me see if I can do it on the legs here. Yeah, there you go. You can see that a lot better. And I'm just leaving that on there because that's the look I want. I want that nice coffee stained look. And like I said, because that chalk paint is so porous, it's just sucking it up. And then now that I'm here by the bottom of the white, I'm just gonna blend it up in there. You can see my hands are coffee stained. I should have wore gloves, couldn't find any. So this is what we get. <laughs> coffee stained hands, I'll go in and Use a little bleach, maybe some toothpaste. I've heard that toothpaste is supposed to get coffee stains out. We'll see. But I'm just kind of wanting to get that all on there and not wipe it off of the green. And inside here, I've mixed a spot or two, which is fine because it's just what it's supposed to be. It's just kind of vintagey, aged. And this is such a fun little technique because you get just the look you want. And if you want more, you put more on. You want less, take more off. Let's turn this one around. And once I get this done, I will seal this. I will seal it all up um, because I don't want that coffee stain coming off on anything. So finally, these chairs that have been giving me fits for days and days because they are so much work. I don't know if I will ever do upholstery again. I'll tell you that, painting upholstery, because it is a lot of work. Um, I think I just picked some really difficult chairs that had some really deep grooves on the back, some really you know unique arms right here. And right in here is so hard. You gotta lift this cushion up and paint all this and then put it back down and try not to contaminate the first paint that you put on there. I tell you what, it is a handful. And like I said, I don't know if I'll ever do this again unless it's on an easy, removable chair that I can take off the actual chair seat itself and, you know, paint it and then put it back on. Because, boy, that was a lot of work. But I'll just kind of show you here with this. It's getting a nice patina on it, which I just love. And um, these right here will be all... I'm gonna put gilding on these. And then I'm gonna take dark wax, brown wax, and put that in here. So there's gonna be a lot more detailing to this at a uh, later date. I just need to get this coffee on there and let it sit for 24 hours so that it just really sets in. And okay, I've got the chairs out here and I've sprayed them with a matte spray. So I'm just letting them dry before it gets too hot out here today. And I'm going to be using those inlays on the back. Okay, now I've got my paint inlays. And as you can see on my table, 
This is what I'm going to be putting on the chairs. And I have to tell you, it comes with eight sheets originally. Looks eight sheets that are 12 by 16, just to kind of show you. This stuff is the best bang for your buck as far as decorating when you get these eight sheets because you can cut these up into any size you like. So I'm going to take the remaining six sheets that I have and I'm going to do those last four chairs. All right, I've got my chair flipped up here and I'm going to work on it. As you can remember with these inlays, you've got to, uh, I'm going to cut them out and I'm going to cut them um, very close to their edge so that there's not a lot of seam. I noticed on the table when I did it, there was there was too much seam and I had to, to cover it up. So what happens after I get these done and laid on the actual backing here, I'm going to take some paint, my buttercream, and blend these in. So I just really wanna cut these close as I can this time. Um, so I don't have a lot of blending to do. And then what will happen as with the table here, um, you'll see the table, I'll come back and just kind of take some water and bleed this out a little bit like I did on the table. So let's go ahead and get started on this and see how it turns out. Okay, getting ready to do my inlays and as you can see, I cut them really more precise this time so that I can be a little less messy. Let's put it that way. Now, as before, remember you've got to use the paint and you put the paint on, you put the inlay on it, and then you spritz this inlay with some water or a wet sponge and I, I ch or a towel. I choose to use a wet washcloth and um, then walk away and let it dry. Once it's dry, then we'll come back, we'll wet it again and peel it off. So now, you know, it says to decide where you want your plan. Well, I'll tell you what, on this chairs, it's a little hard because everything keeps rolling unless I tape them. So I'm gonna go get a little bit of just, a bit of painter's tape and put a tab on here, a little bit of painter's tape so I can know where I want my design to go. Okay, I've taken little tabs of tape and kind of just stuck my pattern around. It's a little different trying to do a pattern on a curved surface opposed to a flat surface because you can see the whole thing at one shot. So this one you kind of have to take a look around and say, okay, where did I miss? Um, and this right here is one and a half sheets. So I don't want to go cut any more sheets because I want to make sure I have one and a half sheets for each chair. And so I think I'm gonna go with this. I think this one maybe needs to go a little bit further down and a little to the side. Because I just kind of want to have an even spot. I don't want to have big bald spots. I'm concerned about that. Um, but at the same time, I don't want them overcrowded. So you know what? I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna go for it. I'm thinking that works. I think we'll do this corner one here. You can see that in the camera. Just kind of getting an idea of where all that buttercream is going to go. I don't want to go crazy with the buttercream. Um, but got to make sure you get it on there. Enough on there to lay your piece in it. Ooh, it looks like mine's a little wet. I have to dry that off. So kind of looking at the size of my decal here or my inlay. I want to make sure I get good paint coverage. And I think I got it. And well, let's make sure I get that laid in there. Oh goodness. There we go. I'm thinking that looks good. This little corner up here got missed. Put a little paint there. Anywhere I think I missed, just kind of laying down in it. Take off my little tab here that in there. I just want to spritz it, not getting anything else wet. And press that in to the paint. And you can see immediately the coloring just goes really bright and vivid. I'm going to kind of 
wipe away some of that buttercream. dry really good then I'll come back out moist them with just clear water peel them off taking these off and remember when you take these off to be very delicate and gentle with them because you can reuse them there's enough paint on these inlays that they can be reused and what I'm finding is I'm just kind of misting all of them just make sure your mist water doesn't run down into your other ones that you've already gotten peeled off because remember, this paint can be reactivated with moisture. And that's a good thing for us because we're gonna smear these a little bit to make them look a little more distressed and old, but you don't want your paint running when you're not ready. And just peeling that off. And so if you can see that little piece, all that on there, that's still good paint. And you can use this again. I'm gonna use gilding on this. I'm gonna use gilding on those little rivets, the little um, nail heads that are in there and all along this, and then, you know, just some gilding in places. But I think what's most important right now is to get this antiqued a little bit. And in doing that, I need to get my coffee back out because we're trying to duplicate this, remember? And so I need to age this just a titch. We don't want this to be a bright white back here. And so, Let's see if we can get in there a little bit. Yeah, that's working. Okay, what I'm doing here is after I've coffee dyed it, I'm gonna take a little clear water and reactivate this paint and um, smear it a little bit so it looks a little bit more distressed, a little more vintage. Okay, so I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna keep antiquing up this chair, getting it to just the right patina. Need some along here. Doesn't that make a big, huge difference? Just that titch of wax. This is amazing. It makes it so yummy. I'm so happy with that. And it doesn't matter if I get it on here, because remember, I'm going to go ahead and go over that with the gilding. I do want a little bit in here to shadow. I think I'll get the bigger brush to do that. So it's not too heavy. Smear that around. Try to wax into these corners a little bit to give them some aged look. Smear this out a little bit more. and finish this up and then we will start on another one okay here's the one chair all done on the back I've got the wax on the edges so I've darkened up the edges to give it a little bit more character a little more dimension I'm gonna show you the front I just kept the front simple I didn't do any decals just again waxed along the stripes waxed the edge of the back and the corners this right here will be gold gilding, and so will the piping. I'll do gold gilding all around that. But for now, we're gonna let that dry. I'm going to seal it with a spray mat, the whole thing. Then I will come back and do the gilding. I think I'll come back and I'm going to put a semi-gloss um, finish on here because that's what matches the table. But I wanna keep the, this part a mat. 
Um, so I need to put the affixant spray or a um, spray on there just now to affix all the waxing so it doesn't come off. Um, because if I were to wipe it or to brush on the sealant right now, um, it would smear that wax around. That wax is still very movable at this point. So you do need to seal your waxes. Um, but I'm gonna do that, but I think I'll seal them all at once. So I'm gonna get all the chairs done and do all the sealing at once. So I'm not working between stages on each chair. So just wanted to give you a heads up on that and see how lovely they turned out. Okay, just wanted to show you the chairs here. I've gone ahead and got the gilding on. If you can see it on the cording or the binding around the fabric, it looks really good. Did a few little touches, got it on the rivets, and then again on the front and with all the shadowing. They turned out beautiful. The chairs are very nice. Let me get up here and take a look. There's one. Here's another one. Again, all the gilding done. And then as you can see on the back, also finished and let me get this one turned around did the gilding on that one and that one over there so the chairs are all done the project is done I am thrilled again this upholstery was a lot of work don't know if I will jump off on that anymore it's kind of insane but um, yes I'll get these all put together and staged and get them set for sale Thank you for being here with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Happy creating.